is the SSL Family Dad with Simple Support Living, and we're here with uh, episode 10 of our uh, Walk Aquaponics walkthroughs. Um, this is actually going to be the last episode in the walkthrough series. We're going to start a new series here um, that will be named just a little bit differently. So if you're following along with the with the series, the, the name is going to change, but same uh, same type of video. So. Um, today I'm just going to do a, a quicker video and uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the types of grow media that uh, I've experimented with and uh, some of the research that I've done on grow media. Um, I think I finally come to a decision on what I want to use, uh, switch out the rock that I have and uh, what type of grow media that, uh, that, I've, that I've chosen. Um, I still have a couple last tests that I want to do and I'll kind of talk to you a little bit about those uh, just to make sure because I don't want to have to change this out again if I don't have to. Um, but it's all kind of a learning experience, so uh, you got to do what you got to do. But uh, I'll go ahead and give you a close-up of the rock that I found and um, talk a little bit about that. All right, for those of you that have been following along with the system, you'll know that I currently the rock that I have in the aquaponic system is this river rock. And this is the stuff that I bought from Home Depot. Um, it's a Viagro brand, uh, or Viagro I believe it's called, um, branded uh, just river rock or river stone. Um, it's supposed to be pH neutral, um, but apparently the stuff, at least the stuff that's sold around here in Michigan, um, any of this three quarter inch and half inch uh, rock, it has limestone in it. Um, most of it tests out fine, but let's see if I can find a piece of limestone I'll put in the, in the vinegar here. Um, but some of it just fizzes like crazy when you do the vinegar test, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Um, so some of this rock is pH neutral, and some of it has limestone in it, and like I said, it just fizzes like crazy in the uh, vinegar. So um, obviously if you're looking at setting a new system up, the most important thing is that you make sure you have a neutral pH rock, some, nothing that has any fossils or shells or um, calcium type rocks in it or limestone or anything like that. Um, so, so this stuff is no good. Um, I've also gone around to a few different landscape supply companies here in my area and tested a bunch of different rock that they have there and all of the stone the cheap stuff the stuff that's like 20 bucks a yard it has limestone in it and uh, failed all the tests that i tried so won't be able to use any of the real cheap rock so that leaves us with a couple different options um, and here's the rock that i chose and i'll get to that in just a moment but you have a few different options so you can go with the the baked clay or the expanded clay balls those are extremely expensive um, to fill a system like this it's, it would cost well over 200 dollars um, to fill that and those also do break down over time now they, they last a pretty long time but I've seen some other videos um, JT Bear and uh, Rob Bob and some of the guys have been doing this for quite a long time they uh, they have had those break down if they're left outside in the weather so but they are probably the best option the, the expanded clay so if you can afford it or you're doing a smaller system I would highly recommend locating and, and buying those um, Pea gravel is another option, but again, I tested the pea gravel in my area. Uh, that all, it has limestone in it, and so that's, it's basically made of the same stuff that this stuff is. It's just the smaller rock when they sift it out. So that, didn't, that wasn't going to be an option for me either. You also don't want to go with too small of rock because it can compact down in your system, and you end up, uh, you know, after, if you get any fish waste or anything, roots and that, it can't grow through it quite as well. There's not, enough, not as many air gaps in it. So you want to go with something a little larger than that if you can. It will work just fine, but... Uh, a little bit larger is better. So the rock that I ended up finding at a landscape supply, and this is $90 a yard, um, that's picked up. And this is called Beechwood Stone. And basically what this stuff is, is what it, what it looks like, is it looks like petrified wood, but I, I don't think it is. I've also seen it called Cliff Chips or Cliff Rock or um, other variations like that. And I think what this is, and I, I haven't been able to find out too much information, so if anybody knows, let me know. But it looks like it's a, you know, eroded cliff rock that has been kind of washed in, in a lake or, or the ocean or something, I don't know. Uh, but it's, this is vinegar that I have this sitting in here right now, and this is, you can see there's, there's no bubbles from any of the, uh, the beechwood stone that I have in here. Um, I bought a half a yard, which probably will not fill my entire system, but I wanted to just get a half a yard at a time before I went and did the whole thing. Um, this stuff is very light, so it's it's probably equivalent to like your, your expanded clay. It's a very light rock, which is nice. Um, 
I am going to do some further tests on the rock and actually throw it into some distilled water and let it sit for a few days and then test the pH and see if the pH rises because there are still other components of different types of rock that can, can raise pH. So I just want to be sure before I put this in the system. And then uh, probably next week I'll start switching this rock out. Um, I'll get you a closer look here at the piece of the river rock that I put in the vinegar here so you can see it bubble. Alright, so hopefully you can you can see I, I put two two pieces of the uh, river rock that I have currently in my system in there in the center so the two little rocks in the center um, and that stuff is is bubbling like crazy I don't know if you can see the the bubbles from your angle there but uh, it's just fizzing off there like crazy and if you leave it in there for long enough it'll I mean the whole rock will just disappear <laughs> essentially but it'll just keep fizzing away and that's what's raising the pH in my system um, apparently this uh, stuff is, well, I think it's limestone pieces, it's uh, stable at about a pH of 8.2 and so that's what my system just continues to level out at is 8.2. So um, that's why we're going to be switching this out. So I'll take you guys along with the progress of that as I get the, uh, the rock switched out and uh, keep you updated on how well it's working. I think this stuff's going to work really well though. Um, this rock is... It's a good size, uh, not a you know not a lot of real small pieces. It's uh, various different sizes and shapes, so there'll be lots of air gaps in the in the system, which is good for water flow and for air for the roots and everything else. So I think it's going to work out well. Uh, but I'll I'll let you know. It is really the cheapest stuff I could find that uh, is pH neutral. Um, so uh, hopefully that'll it'll work out well and give you some ideas if you're setting the system up. So I'll go ahead and show you the growth progress on the the aquaponic system here and see what we have growing. All right, so everything's been been growing really well uh, over the last couple weeks here. I, the swirl filter's been working great, and you can see there's a whole bunch of sediment built up on the bottom of it already, and it's been keeping the, the grow beds nice and clean. So, of course, I'm going to be switching this rock out, so I'll give them all a good cleaning before I put the new rock in, but uh, I think we'll have a good start here, so we'll keep be able to keep that uh, rock clean from now on. Swirl filter, swirl filter is working, working very well. Um, over here, I did transplant the uh, uh, oregano back here. It's looking pretty sorry. Um, again, I think pH issues. So um, once I get that fixed, that stuff should perk up. Um, nice thing about the aquaponics is that you can pretty much move things all over the place however you want to. So I've been moving things all over, and they, uh, they do pretty well. So um, all the kale, and I, I consolidated all the kale plants that I had into this little area, and this stuff's ready to start cutting some leaves off of, and probably make some kale chips and there's a few other recipes I think we were gonna use this for um, so we can start taking some leaves off of that that stuff is very very strong flavored I've never been a huge kale person uh, but uh, it's, it's extremely good for you so even if you just cut up a leaf and throw it in you mix it in with a salad it's really good for you um, so that's that's growing really well in the higher pH it's been growing excellent and uh, the tomatoes are still growing very well they're <laughs> Um, growing all over the place in fact they're taking over the beds and I've uh, had to pull out these are all cuttings I took off the tops and I'm just trying to clone these in some little pots of wet dirt here and uh, so I just cut the whole top off of these and put them in I've had pretty good luck with it actually I have a couple outside that are growing in our garden already that are clones and they've been doing really well so um, the green pepper plant and I've got uh, you saw in the intro there a couple green peppers that are getting pretty good size and I don't know if you can see in the back there there's a couple more on that little plant I moved this one back here so I don't know if I can get back there or not but so there's two back there and then there's two growing up here now one thing that I have had going on with this uh, this green pepper plant is it seems like the flowers will pollinate see a little pepper in there there it is focus and then they just fall off and so I'm not sure again if the pH yeah, the, the plants not avail, able to absorb enough nutrients quick enough and so it's um, you know only able to support a couple peppers at a time but uh, they're pollinating and I've been pollinating everything and you can tell that the pepper starts to form and then the they just fall off so but there's flowers everywhere this pepper plant just flowers like crazy so I'm sure we'll get some more peppers going on it and I had a couple tomatoes now <laughs> again this is a kind of strange because unless I mixed something up when I planted these, which is very possible, these were supposed to be hybrid regular sized tomatoes <laughs> and they're ripening as like cherry tomatoes. But I, I very well could have gotten this, this plant mixed up. So maybe it is a cherry tomato plant. Um, 
I didn't think so, but uh, crazier things have happened. So, so we've had a couple little tomatoes, um, beans. Again, I'm still getting probably five or six, maybe seven beans a week off the the bean plant back here. There's one on the top um, that's kind of growing weird, but uh, those have been real big. And celery's growing awesome in here. I've got some really nice celery stalks going up, and I got to spread all this out once I get my um, last grow bed here uh, finished up. But uh, everything's been really growing well. The pea plant is, uh, actually I'll show you this too, the dill has been doing really well. That's been growing pretty full, so um, should have enough of that to do some pickles at the end of the season here. And the pea plant's still growing up into the window. In fact, it's got two stems now that, that come up, and there's a couple peas forming. There's the one over uh, far back there. Where is it? There it is. A little flower on the end of it. <coughs> and then there's another one somewhere over here, I think. Um, down here somewhere but uh, there's a, so there's a couple peas for them but they're they're not it's not really flowering very much so I'm not sure exactly what's going on uh, with that it's getting some daylight too so um, haven't been able to figure out how to really get that to flower but maybe it's just not mature enough so it might might start taking off here soon but uh, that's pretty much it um, on the update for this week um, I'll keep you guys updated on the progress of the of the rocks as we get everything put in and how well this media works. Um, again, if you're setting up a system for the first time or looking to add on to yours, you know, I can't stress it enough to make sure you test the uh, grow media that you're going to use because it can be quite a challenge. I got to haul all this rock out of here and clean the new rock. And it's, it's probably the hardest part of the system is getting all the rock in there. So this is going to be quite a bit of work ahead of me here, but uh, we'll get it done. And uh, like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. So Thank you for watching. Have a good one.